Good day, everyone. I'm Anna Uspinskaya. Welcome to Virtual Concert Hall's Live Classical Music Channel. We are connecting musicians and audiences in real time in live performances from around the globe. Today I have a distinguished guest joining me for this interview, Olivier Chasson. He's a French guitarist and professor of the Paris Conservatory. We continue introducing Sound as Perceiver, a competition created by a community of musicians, music educators, music managers, with a purpose to make a difference for young musicians, for their teachers, parents of music students. We want to empower musicians with new tools, enrich with new thinking, expand horizons of what's possible, what can work, and what can be a source of great joy and success for a modern performing artist. And now I'd like to introduce our guest, Olivier Chasson, a guitarist from France. Welcome on our show. It's such a great honor and pleasure to have you here today. I share the honor, Anna. Hello. You are juggling three career paths as a musician, as a performer and recording artist, as an educator in really important um, music institutions, and also as a composer. Just, just a few words about how that feels to you to be a musician in so many facets. Well, I think uh, a musician is not just a... Is it unique uh, in a unique, uh, uh, you know, um, like one you're, thing? You're, you're, yes, yes. We we are just more um, uh, diverse, multifaceted, you know. And I think it's uh, all all the all what you 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 said is complementary, you know, between uh, each other. And uh, yes. you, you 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 can. As an interpret, you you may be uh, even much uh, closer to uh, uh, more closer to to a text when you compose yourself, and uh, maybe when you when you are teaching, you are learning a lot from your students. You know, my 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 master, which is on my on my left actually, yes, Alexandre Lagoya told that um, his students had been his best teachers. That's amazing. I saw some of your teaching. I, lo I like I like the, the the concept, you know, and the, the truth. That's the truth. I mean, we learn a lot from from the youth, from uh, the new generations, from uh, from from more, you know, from the process from more next, from more next. And when they are young, it's even better. Yes. Well. What's the best way to introduce a musician? Everyone can read the biography and I would like to encourage you. There is a running text below and please leave the, your comments to us. That's uh, to our audience. But I would like to uh, present a wonderful guitarist, musician, um, recording artist, performer, educator, um, Olivier Chasson with his music. Let's hear some of his guitar playing. <laughs>
that's such a beautiful recording of um, um well i want to ask you i understand that you met george de Lihu at one yeah. point it, oh my gosh yeah. tell us a little bit about it yeah and no. that's a picture of you and him right yes it's me yeah it's me it's him, it's him too yeah and uh in fact um He went to, invited by the, the, the Paris Conservatory where, when I was a student under Alexandre Lagoya. Mm -hmm. And it was just for the examination of uh, first sight reading. And uh, okay. he went to me and said, I, well, I, I have never heard a guitarist uh, reading through a text like, like you did. So congratulations. That's a wonderful compliment. And, yeah, I'm sure and, so encouraging. I, I was like this. I saw it. It's, it's <laughs> I would be too. Are, are you sure it's it's a little too much? I know. No, 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 no. Uh, and a few a few months after, I, I won the GFA. And uh, Claire, uh, his daughter, one of his daughters, was uh, in the hall because I, I was very uh, a close friend, uh, and I am still uh, of the LA Quartet, LA Guitar Quartet. Mm -hmm. And so everybody was um, uh, was there for the Toronto Festival, mm -hmm. just one year be before the GFA. And uh, when I won the GFA, Claire was in the hall because we, we had uh, uh, becoming friends and because of his fa uh, her father. And, um, you know, afterwards, when the tour, the, the, the big tour of the GFA was, uh, was on, you know, during uh, more than one year. Uh, I, I was uh, officially invited at uh, George's house in LA. And so we, we became really close friends, very, very close friends. He dedicated a piece to me. And afterwards I invited him uh, to have the premiere of uh, his uh, concerto for four guitars with, with, uh, with John, uh, Uh, with Bill, with the quartet, you know, and... Quartet of guitars. Yeah, the LA, mm -hmm. LA Guitar Quartet. And um, so it, it was a big feast in Limousin region, where mm -hmm. I was living at that time, before, before having been nominated to, to Paris, mm -hmm. and, and uh, not, not still uh, living in Bordeaux, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was taking care um, uh, of a, a, a big stereo, concert stereo with string quartets or pianists or orchestras, you know, whatever. Uh -huh. And so I decided, I had decided to, uh, to promote the guitar for the uh, first festival uh, uh, of which the idea was, um, was uh, being uh, every two years devoted to a different instrument. Mm. So as, as a guitarist, I, I thought it was a good idea to make my teeth, you know, on, on, yes, on, yes. on the instrument. <laughs> Of which, course. Which I, which I, I, I was knowing the, the most, you know. And, and then George came from L.A. And uh, I, I, I played the uh, Oana, Maurice Oana Concerto, uh -huh. and, uh, in the World Region and with the orchestra. And, uh, and uh, George was there, and uh, with the Ali Quartet was there, the Assad Brothers, Vladimir Mikulka, a lot, a lot of people that mm -hmm. I invited. And uh, it was a big feast, and then, you know, we, we became more and more friends. And when I was uh, going to the States and on the West Coast, I was automatically uh, coming to, uh, to Skyline Drive. Yes. In Bever Beverly is where he was living. That's wonderful. And that's exactly um, the stories like that, which are so encouraging. And um, you formed a lifelong collaboration with a wonderful musician and so many beautiful things you were able to create together. That's exactly what the Sounders Perceiver wants to create for young musicians and for um, their teachers and for everyone in the community of, of um, devoted um, people devoted to music. We want to create this... Um, sphere that space where people don't just walk in on stage perform and say goodbye and never hear back from anyone so this is a space where people can connect communicate with each other and form long-lasting relationships completely outside maybe uh, the sound is pretty simple. just like you met in the one occasion with george and then you were able to uh do so many beautiful things together and record an album his pieces and he, he was traveling 
to France, you were traveling to the United States, and this is so fruitful. We wanted to touch the um, point, uh, uh, a topic there. What would be the motivation for the judges and contestants to join the Sound Dispersivo or another event similar to Sound Dispersivo, not necessarily this competition, but another competition? You were interested in the topic. Let's uh, explore it a little bit. Well, um, at my generation, um, competing was uh, enough when you when you were uh, uh, the first prize of such a competition as the, the GFA is is still you know a, a huge one maybe the biggest in the world and so um, I just attended this this one and um, being so lucky to to to, to gain the, the the first prize I stopped because it was no more necessary to. To, uh, to do what the new generation does now, uh, running after different prizes all over the world and having um, in, uh, in their pocket, you know, not only the prize, but a uh, certain amount of concerts. And they are, they, they are making their living like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of strange life to compete and gain some more concerts. And, and uh, you know, so I, I have, I ate I hate competitions myself, and uh, I mean especially this kind of competition when you have to travel so far, mm -hmm. so far from your country, and uh, not risking your life, you know, but you know risking uh, to be really disappointed. And, uh, to I have a lot of students now who, who, are, who, com who are competing, and you know. Uh, um, very often they are, they, sometimes they win and, you know, sometimes they, they, they don't. And sometimes they, they are, they are... Um, Coming empty-handed. They, 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 they are very sad of having been uh, not heard like, uh, like, like they should have been heard, you know. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, the eternal uh, uh, feeling of... Uh, of of ha having been a victim of uh, something which which was not a justice or you know, but exactly. uh, yeah, it's not it's not a, a false feeling sometimes, but the competitions are are like this. So who is the best? I, you know, that's that's the the purpose, and for me, uh, the best one is not the one who who plays the fa the, the, the the faster, or the, right. the louder. Or you know, imposing himself uh, with a, a lot of uh, security of playing and everything, but uh, it's a sum. It's a sum of qualities, and uh, the first one is humility and just uh, musicality, and spirit, and uh, great heart, cleverness, mm -hmm. cleverness, intelligence of you know the, the intelligence of a text. And that's the reason for I studied uh, counterpoint, harmony, and mm -hmm. th I think it was absolutely necessary for a musician, an interpret uh, of um, polyphonic instrument, to to do these studies. So, I I was the first one in, Par in at the Paris Conservatory to do it, to to make the adventure, you know, to uh -huh. yeah, to dive into it, uh -huh. and now. All my students are doing it, so it's a, it, it, it became uh, something which is uh, like an evidence, you know, that you need not only to be uh, uh, a good athlete, but also uh, a, a deep musician and uh, cultivated, you know, and. Um, yeah, and this is so wonderful to hear because we hear a lot from um, young musicians, uh, d like you said, disappointment. Maybe they bring uh, to the competition a program which is well thought through and uh, deeply felt and profoundly interpreted, but they feel like um, they were maybe not noticed as much compared to uh, another, another choice of repertoire, more athletic and uh, virtuosic. So it's sounded as perceivable, we created the artistic categories to give space to the musicians who have different preferences and different aesthetics. So the virtuosos would not feel 
intimidated by someone who can play a little miniature in such a way that melts everybody's heart and vice versa. So uh, virtuosos can choose, uh, let's say virtuoso category or program category, people who want to expand and create a larger program presented to uh, musicians, to, to the judges. And um, people who prefer to play miniatures can focus on that area and again um you know th there's nine categories and i would like to encourage uh, everyone who is watching to visit our website and see what those categories are and definitely in some of them the contestants will meet and get live real-time comments from olivier and um, you can um, be sure that he will pay attention to the depth of your interpretation right and um uh, i would like to show one of your own really profound interpretations and it's one of my favorite the vivaldi concerto uh, let's hear a little bit of okay. um, olivier's own interpretation of classical and polyphonic music
That is absolutely gorgeous. Olivier, absolutely it's so delicate, such a gorgeous recording. Bravo. You're Thank in touch. You. Thank you. I wanted to ask you, um, we're so honored and so happy to have you on the judges panel. Um, and um, so I wanted to ask, um, to say just a couple of words, what may be a motivation for the judges to join Sanders Perceiver competition? What did you find? Wh why did you agree? <laughs> why, why did I agree? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because I, I, I understood, uh, thanks to to Pierre Baudry, a, a very, very close friend uh, from many years because we were studying under Alexandre Lagoya at the same promotion, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I understood immediately that Sound Espressivo competition was something else, you know. Mm -hmm. Something beside, beside this, uh, this kind of wars and uh, that I, I tried to assume, but it, it was not my... It was not my cup of tea, I must say. So uh, I think that we, you know, the, the, there is a virtuosity, another vir kind of virtuosity, which is uh, the inside, inside yourself, you know. And so if if you have the 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 lack of expressing your emotions and putting everything in order, I mean, because it's a kind, uh, it's a a purpose of artistry, so it must be organized. But when you have the technique, and if the technique is uh, helping the music itself and serving the text, and uh, you know just pure joy, I think that uh, a competition could could be uh, a nice. A nice adventure, and uh, I do hope that Sound Expressivo uh, will change the minds. You know, not only not only from the the other side of us, I mean the competitors, but also from 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 ourselves in, inside ourselves. Because uh, I have participated in a lot of competitions where the, the atmosphere was really wonderful, really wonderful, and very friendly, like. Uh, uh, the Michele Pitaluga competition, or the Benny Cassim competition, and the GFA also, many times, many times mm -hmm. the GFA, and uh, you know many others. But I think that the temptation is that when you when you when you move to to, to the to the, the the place where the competition takes place and you are very far from your house and you must be really very courageous. Mm -hmm. I have lived ex this experience and uh, I, I, I believe that sometimes beautiful artists, potential artists, uh, don't make the step mm -hmm. to travel. You know, Mozart said uh, that uh, a good musician had to travel. Exactly. You yeah. remember that? So mm -hmm. I think it's a good thing. But when you travel, not for competing, but just just for pleasure and just for to sharing music, you know, that's a different thing. So maybe a competition doesn't need to to travel. To to demand the travel. Yes. So yes. if 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 um, if you if you can uh, make the economy of of traveling, I think it's even better because mm -hmm. you feel certainly much more at ease when you are at home recording for a, a so-called virtual competition. But, you know, uh, we are speaking in real. Today. Exactly. We are not and, recorded. We are real and, people in real time right now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a question of relativity, you know. It's, uh, it's not really virtual. It's not really real because we are not... Uh, in the yeah. pro close proximity of each other. No, we're not. Uh, but yes, at the same time, but I feel uh, very close, like we are close to each other. We, so we, are, we are both on the other side of the lake, you know, as you, as yes. you say, about yes, the Atlantic yes. Ocean, you know, <laughs> yes. but, uh, with, a, with a time difference. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, competing is, uh, is really something very tough and 
uh, I live with my students sometimes uh, beautiful successes. I, I had three uh, students from the Paris Conservatory having won the, the GFA, after, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, Thibaut Garcia, um, uh, among others. And, and that's, uh, that's a very beautiful, uh, beautiful adventure to, to, uh, to prepare a student for that. And, but um, I must say that, that if you are at home and sending sending your uh, your um, performance recording over, yeah. Yeah. recording well and for I a think that's, this that's a, yeah apparently. musicians have an opportunity to even perform from home in yeah. real time so uh, recording is a great thing to do we all need to learn how to make good recordings but um performing live uh, is a different thing so here, the contestants have an opportunity to perform live without having to travel, which takes away this burden of enormous investment of time and finances. You have to take time from work, from exactly. studying, from it's everything. And you have to make all the travel arrangements. And then it could be, as people say, for nothing if you don't really take away anything from the competition. You don't win. So here, the risk and investment is much less. And like you said, a lot of people feel much more intimate and comfortable performing in a space which they are familiar with. So they may, might perform better in a competition just because they don't have to adjust time zones, travel, you know, all of those complications and logistics. Yeah, uh, not, not only psychologically speaking, but uh, uh, also uh, financially speaking, materially speaking. I think that's absolutely sure. You're burning my ideas because we share them. Yes, uh, yes, absolutely. As an evidence, yeah. Because Sanchez PC was created by musicians, by a community yeah. of musicians. We all understand the logistics, the burdens and the hurdles because we all go through them or went through them when we were younger and competing. So we wanted to create the competition which is supportive and more doable, more accessible to people. Exactly. That's wonderful. Yeah. I, I, I just wanted to, to, um, to tell to the, to, to the audience who might uh, hear us and uh, who might have heard me playing uh, the this Vivaldi uh, part mm -hmm. of the concerto. It, it was a double concerto and uh, I had been invited with, by a close friend of mine uh, with uh, Pierre-Henri Zureb, mm -hmm. who, who uh, teaches the Viola d'Amore and uh, at the La, La Hague uh, Conservatory in Holland. Mm -hmm. And uh, who is uh, also my colleague at the Paris Conservatory and a very close friend. And he invited me to record it with Christophe Poiget, uh, who is um, a violinist, a baroque violinist, a beautiful musician too. So I, I just wanted to uh, oh, that's wonderful to to to, uh, to, to, to give credit, make, make make my reverence to to them. Yes, make a reverence and, exactly, and, <laughs> and and tell to uh, to to uh, all the persons who are uh, hearing hearing me that that it's a beautiful luck to share music with beautiful musicians and uh, you learn so so much from from your next absolutely and, and uh, it was pure joy to, to 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 make this recording and to play many 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 times with uh, Pierre-Henri Zvereb and uh, and other other musicians uh, wonderful at, at this at this level at this, you know? at this level yeah oh yeah Patrick Gallois, for example, you know the flutist, Patrick Gallois? Mm -hmm. beautiful, oh, yeah. Beautiful musician. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, yes, it, it was uh, really wonderful. This, uh, this experience was a great one. Yeah, this is wonderful. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, and um, we, I w we would like to conclude this uh, program and um, our conversation with our wonderful and very loving and giving guest um, with another performance of Olivier, and that will be um, the all-time eternal piece by Bach. Let's hear it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, that's such a wonderful performance. At one point, it sounded like an organ, <laughs> and you did it on a guitar. Almost. It blew my mind. <laughs> Beautiful. Almost. Yeah. So you, you asked me about uh, the guitar that I, I held. That's right. <coughs> and you wanted me to tell the story. <laughs> yes, please tell us this, the, the story. Can you see that picture one more time, please? And uh, we have a director who's going to show the picture one more time. Yeah. It's on the main, um, on the main card. Uh, we want to show yes, that's this, one. this guitar. That one. Yes. So this guitar is a Robert Boucher guitar, and the one uh, made for Ida Presti, um, and another one made for Alexandre Lagoya for their incredible duet. And um, I had the opportunity to uh, make them bought by the Paris Museum. Oh um, wow! The, yeah, at the conservatory, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the Cité de la Musique, there, is, right. the, there is the Musée de la Musique. And so um, I, I had played sometimes uh, several instruments, uh, uh, recording instruments, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for, for the museum. And one day with Joël Dugo, a close friend who was uh, the, the responsible of the, 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 the instruments, uh -huh. the guitar instruments, um, he, he told me, well, if you had the opportunity to know what uh, became these guitars, uh, we have some, uh, some possibilities to, to buy them. So please make an investigation. And you know what? The following day, Sylvain Lagoya, the Ida, Ida and Alexandre's son, mm -hmm. told, called me and he said, Olivier, uh, I don't know what to do with these guitars. Can, can, can you help me to, to, to make them bought by somebody or uh, an institution or whatever? And I, I was just doing this to, on, on, my, you know, <laughs> yes. on my body because I, it was Is like, it real? <laughs> it was like providence, you know, it, it was something exactly. yeah, from heaven. I, I, maybe Ida and Alexandre together, you know, and uh, inspiring uh, their son. And so the guitars were bought the week after. Amazing. And so, uh, yeah, and so I, uh, it, was a, it was a beautiful An incredible joy. story. Yeah, it was a beautiful joy for me, but for Sylvain too, because he was very afraid to, uh, when he, ca he was coming back to his house, mm -hmm. uh, he, he, was, he was running to the place where he was hiding them, because he was very afraid that they might have been robbed you know one oh my day. and so yes. it, it has been a, a, a big release for him and mm -hmm. uh, a, a big luck for us at the paris conservatory uh, and uh, and the cité de la musique to see these instruments uh entering forever uh to and this now beautiful the, institution and now so, they're at the museum and um, so, people can yeah. play it yeah and and uh, we we did it with um with Steinerie Colsen, uh, I had the project to record all the works by Ida Presti mm -hmm. that I revised and finished because sometimes they were not. And uh, we have done a, a beautiful CD, I must say. Wonderful. Uh, yes, uh, on these guitars. Oh, so wow. Amazing. As the, as the music was done by Ida at that time, uh, and uh, it was really the perfect instruments, you know, to, to record on. Mm -hmm. Well, each and guitar, of course, has its own yeah, voice, yes. its own character. And so, so the, this this uh, this recording is, uh, is certainly available yet, yeah. and um, they are the, all the duets by Ida Presti. Wonderful! I would like to encourage everyone to t take a good look and, yeah. uh, and get in and touch with Olivier or us, oh, and yeah. uh, we'll help you find those recordings, those CDs uh, made on authentic guitars. Of, um, of the time, right? Yeah, wait a minute. So you're going to show us, I guess Olivier is going to show us another surprise. No, I, I don't have it uh, oh, don't. <laughs> close by, but you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful recording. I love it. I, I love Ida, Ida's music. She, she was just, um, just marvelous uh, on stage and, and uh, behind uh, her pencil, you know, it was, it, it, you know, it, it shows that uh, you know, you know, says that this um, this duet this 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 duet was really simply great and the 
it was a big emotion to play on their guitars and yes uh, to to of course to to uh to revise the the music and um, i i did uh, i did it it's under it's there you know oh I, I i will put my the computer a little lower that's oh yes that, there it is mm -hmm. that's the last one with for the solo guitar and it's a, it's a publicity it's published by berben and it's my last work concerning the the, the solo guitar music of uh, by ida mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so glad we were able to show yeah. that. Uh, Olivia, thank Anyhow. you very much. Uh, we have so many more stories we would like to share of your life, of your adventures and incredible collaborations, and we'll continue to do that. You're, you're, we're planning on having you again as one of our guests. Whenever so we'll you want. continue the conversation you promised. Yes, we want you back. <laughs> I, and you I, already I knew, promise. You know what? I, I'm I'm really very honored and very pleased to to be a part of Sound Expressivo now, and um, you know thanks to Pierre, to Pierre Baudry. Yes. And, uh, it, it's Pierre, a, thank you very much for connecting us. Yeah, but you know it's a, it's he, he's a close friend of mine. We we lost each other because uh, of the distance, but uh, not here and. You know, mm -hmm. I received I received a, uh, a mail from him proposing me to join you, and that's a, a very very nice idea. And uh, I I'm warmly recommending uh, this competition to any competitors because I think it's uh, it's something absolutely new and uh, um, with uh, with a beautiful spirit. For, for devoted to, to music and to musicians, I'm absolutely convinced of that. And it's a, it's a very human competition and... and Thank you. And, Thank and, you. And, and conducted by a, a very smiling <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to thank also our audience and many, many thanks go to the production team. Um, our production team of virtual counter halls also is comprised of professional musicians. The entire company and the entire project of Sound Expressive Competition is created by musicians and for musicians. And I want to say special thanks to Ante Bozic Krudic, who is our director of the show today. He's a composer and a pianist, and he's uh, currently in Croatia, but he's joining us on this virtual uh, broadcast directing this uh, program. And we also would like to say many, many thanks to a great supporter of our project, History of Music Channel. Thank you very much for supporting musicians around the world and our outreach to each other so we can connect and make more beautiful music together with everyone and with our audience. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you again on our next broadcast. Bye now. Goodbye now. No matter where you are or who you are, music connects us all. We started with a dream, but now we are paving the future. Welcome to the Sound Expressiva Global Competition. Fully virtual, yet bringing musicians closer together than ever before, now on a global scale. True live, inclusivity, diversity, connection, community, an extraordinary array of judges. Get noticed by companies all over the world. Prizes, scholarships, performance opportunities. Apply to be a part of the most exciting congregation of artists like nothing you've ever seen before. We guarantee quality and leave no musician behind. We can't wait to hear you on the virtual stage.